All right, welcome back in another pod. I am John Kurtz, joined by Cole Manbeck and Derek Young. Uh, this podcast now affectionately known as Three Ma. I guess that's that's one thing, guys. The first uh, podcast where we're officially unveiling the name instead of just being the unnamed uh, K State podcast here on KCSN. But as always, appreciate Three Sixty Vodka Holiday Distillery for all of their support here on the pod. And uh, as you can see, if you guys are watching on YouTube right now, you can see that uh, we have a very special guest today. That is Jerome Tang, who is the new K-State men's basketball head coach. Uh, all of us extremely excited for this. So first and foremost, uh, Coach Tang, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Manhattan, and, and thank you for joining us. Well, guys, thanks for having me. It's my, my pleasure to be here. I'm excited to be in Manhattan. All right. What has been your favorite part of this process so far in taking over the K-State head coaching job? Uh, two things really stand out. Um, Number one is that I get to live life with some of my best friends and guys that I'm like just really, really close to, you know, that I've that I've known for years and we've dreamt about doing this together. And the fact that the timing of everything worked out that each person uh, could be here and, and it, it fit the, the need and time in their life. So that that's that's exciting. Um, the second thing is just the reception from the fans and the the community it's just been unbelievable uh i i'd heard about how great the fans were and i obviously experienced some of it uh, when we played here but it's been like just blown away anything that i've ever thought and so that is very humbling i'm interested you brought up like hey this has been something you've dreamed about for a long time to be putting together a staff with all the guys and we've seen some of them officially so far, some of them hopefully coming up soon here, but when did that start? Like, when did you start having conversations or think like, Hey, I would love to have Yurik and Jareem and et cetera, et cetera, on board my staff someday when I take a head coaching job. Um, probably, you know, well, I've known Yurik for almost 20 years. So, I mean, just watching him through his career and I, I really thought that um, when I, got my first job, he would be at a place where he couldn't take, you know, like it'd be a pay cut and a demotion, right. um, not a, not a, a promotion for him. So um, I thought that had passed and the opportunity for that to happen. And a dream I've known for 12 years. And um, I knew at some point, I felt like at some point we would work together. And so that one I was, and we coached the Virgin Islands team together. So that's, that's a lot of fun to, to be with him there. And then uh, obviously Marco, I've known him for 10 to 12 years. And this is something that um, we've talked about for a while, probably the last five, seven years. So, and then some of these other guys that are coming on board, uh, some of them are new, uh, I've known recently, but extremely talented. And I'm, I'm excited to get new ideas and have different perspectives from them. Hey, Coach Cole Manbeck here. Welcome to Manhattan. We're, we're thrilled to have you here at Kansas State. Uh, you know, speaking of your staff, uh, I'm curious. It's been a whirlwind, I'm sure, getting your staff in place and then also hitting the ground recruiting and, and filling scholarships. Uh, how have you balanced prioritizing getting that staff in place versus being on the road recruiting? Have you guys kind of split up, divvied the work and, and sent guys out on the road while getting the staff in place and oriented? I'm curious how that's, that process has unfolded. But the most important thing for me was to get the staff and um, like uh, re recruiting as important as it is, um, couldn't take away from first taking care of the house, you know, like what's happening here on the inside and finding out which one of the guys, what, what, what players we needed and wanted to keep and then what was needed here. And so we tried to take care of the home base first. Yeah, Coach Tang, uh, obviously two of your assistants have been announced and I think a couple staffers. Just first off, I think the latest one to be announced was Austin Carpenter, who was a graduate assistant at Baylor. Just what will he provide in terms of his contribution to your program? Uh, he's he's a big pitcher guy. Uh, just like he sees like all the things that can be done. And uh, Austin was in charge of recruiting at the University of Oklahoma football. That's where he got his start. But he really wanted to be a basketball person. So then we were able to get him to be a GA for us at Baylor. 
and then uh, USC just tried to hire him. You know, the staff from Oklahoma left to go to USC, and they just tried to hire him to come there to run their recruiting also because he just has the ability to see the big picture, put a plan together, see what can what needs to, how you can take good and make it great. He's really like people think that they're doing a good job and Austin can walk in and say, if you did this, this and this, it would do it much better, more efficient, have greater impact. And so he's going to walk around these offices. He's going to look at how everything's done and say, these are the things that we can change. This is how we can change them and we can be more effective. And and he's just always thinking what what's new, what's better. Uh, he, he had a great idea, um, well, a great grasp of, of NIL and player marketing also and was ahead of the game. Uh, uh, he, he came to us and we had it in place at Baylor before NIL really kicked in just how to, a player can market themselves. And so I, I'm excited for him to be here. He's also a great basketball mind, uh, but as far as moving the program forward, he's, he's going to be very valuable there. And for your third assistant, do you have an idea of who that will be or at least what you're looking for from that person? Well, I'm, well it's what I'm looking for in every one of my assistants, that they're going to be great communicators. They're going to really care about the student athlete and that they're, they're, they are basketball people. Like, you know, everybody on our staff is going to be basketball. They, they can teach, they can communicate, you know, and uh, they can develop relationships. And so... Again, we're talking with Jerome Tang, K-State's new men's basketball coach. I know you you brought this up briefly, like the, the idea of getting the staff in place obviously took precedent over in some ways, you know, getting guys in here right now. And there are, I think I saw the other day, the 1,300 kids in the portal right now. I mean, obviously there are plenty of options out there. But, you know, for fans who are getting antsy here sitting around saying, hey, I mean, we only have a handful of scholarship players on the roster right now. Like when – when do you expect some of the dominoes to really start to fall with, with some of these guys in the portal and, and, and getting some kids? You know, um, up until this past week, 75% of the kids in the portal are kids that the coaches in those programs wanted them to leave, right? And uh, so there was only 25% of those guys that are guys who left and coaches were like, Man, I, I really want that guy to stay. These next couple of weeks, everybody that goes in the portal are people who the coaches really wanted to stay. And so your better players are going to be entering the, the portal here in the next couple of weeks. And so we, we didn't want to get ahead of the game. And, you know, I would rather have eight guys on the roster who can help you win in this league than have a roster full of 13 people and, you know, they can't help you win in the league. And so we're going to take our time. We're going to get the right people here that's going to give us the best chance to have success, not just next year, but moving forward. Co Coach Baylor, um, you guys had more success arguably than anybody in the portal, right? Over the years. I mean, everybody knows about Davion Mitchell last year, Macy Oteague, Akenjo this year, et cetera. But you go back to Makai Mason, Manu LeCompte from Miami, Royce O'Neal from Denver. You guys have been having success for a decade plus in the portal. What, what is the key uh, to having success in the portal, what do you look for in guys, and how do you evaluate that landscape? Um, well, obviously, there's a certain talent level that they have to have, but really just evaluating their work ethic because nobody's complete. They're not done. They're not where you know if they were, they'd be in the NBA, right? So you got to have guys who like addicted to basketball and they want to keep getting better and you have to drag them out the gym because if if they don't like being in the gym they're not addicted to basketball they're not going to keep getting better and then they'll never get to where they want to get to and so um finding those characteristics and every one of the guys you just said i mean we had to we had to pull them out of the gym you know uh because they were just in there so much we had to structure their workouts as such so that they could be uh, the most efficient rather than just being a quantity guy and but because they just love being in the gym it, it was um like you would actually like have like really stern verbal fights with james akinjo to get him to not do a a 6 a.m shoot and a then a 12 o'clock shoot at night going 100 percent full sweat you know, it's, um, you know, Brady Heslip. Brady Heslip was at Boston College, and they told him he wasn't good enough to play there. 
And we were coming off in the lead eight and he transferred to Baylor and, but we knew about his work ethic and ends up being the best three point shooter in college basketball, you know, and, and, but we had a plan. And, and so guys who will buy into a plan, understand the process, they love being in the gym and they want to be a part of something special. And so it's the evaluation of the whole person, not just their basketball ability. Do you have an idea for, as you move forward, kind of big picture with your program? You know, the portal is so in vogue right now, but how much you want to go to that versus building through the more traditional, like high school and, and maybe a little bit of junior college ranks? I, I think we're going to dabble in a little bit of all of it. The, you know, people always talk about getting old, like you want to get old and stay old. And that's really, that's not the, the to me, that is not the recipe. The, the recipe is to get experienced and to have guys in your program for three years. And when you can get multiple guys in your program for three years and then have guys stacked behind it who will be coming into their third year, um, that, that's how you get good. And, you know, Davion Mitchell was with us for three. Mace was with us for three. Jared Butler was with us for three. You know, I mean, multiple guys, Flo, Flo Thamba, Mark Vidal, guys who are there multiple years, they understand the program. They have a grasp of what wants to be done. That That's what you have to get to. And so just portland doesn't give you instant success, but it's portland with experience and time. Coach, I, I heard you, I think, in one of your earlier uh, press conferences speak about even using analytics in recruiting, what does that look like, or, or what are what is your focus or in depth knowledge, and how you're going to use that? Man, uh, you want me to give away all the secrets? That's that's the secret oh, sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that's the secret sauce. Everybody has different analytics that they use, and I mean, there's several guys out there that do a good job, and um, you just have to know which what things are important to you in your program and then look for those in the the kids that you're recruiting uh that they do it at a high rate it's just not always one particular thing and so for everyone it, everyone values things differently and we have certain things that we value and we really look for those Hey, Coach, it's Cole again. We often hear people say, as Kansas State fans, we, we hear them say that Kansas State, Manhattan is a difficult place to recruit to. Kansas State's a difficult job. What is your response to that? You've been coming to Manhattan for, for 19 years. You've now been here three plus weeks. How do you respond to that perception? Um, I, um, how, how do I say this? Okay. So I've always thought that what makes a job a good job, uh, number one was proximity to players, okay? And then number two was fan base, right? Because kids want to play in front of great fans. And the ability to get kids to campus, uh, that really helps you to build f familiar familiarity with them. Um, so obviously Manhattan, we're a little ways for as far as proximity to players, but what we do have is a great fan base. And so our goal, is we just have to get the guys to campus. The relationships that we have on our staff over the years and the experience we have and of treating kids the right way and, and you know, just really helping them, that's going to allow us to get the, the, the right people to campus. And the fan base that we have is going to make them stay. And uh, so... I feel like we have a plan. I don't I don't care what other people think is difficult. You know, they thought it was, you know, Baylor was a bad job. And uh, but it's not about the, the place. It's about the people, you know, and the outside. I don't care about outside perception. It's about what we're doing here on the inside. And this is an, a very, very special place. And it didn't take long for me to realize that. Uh, on that note, regarding proximity, how important is it to have the direct flights to Dallas, out of Manhattan, to Chicago? I mean, areas you're going to recruit um, and that ability to, to get out on the road. Um, you know, that that's that is important. It definitely helps. Uh, I What I like is that the type of kids we're going to um, attract here are going to be kids who don't care about what. The t you know, like what the nightlife or the, you know, a, a big city. And I mean, we're going to target kids who want to be in a um, 
a very sheltered, you know, lack of distraction environment so they can focus on their game of basketball. They really care about basketball more than anything else. And this is going to appeal to them. And, you know, so early in the process, we'll say, you know, what do you want to be in a city or, you, you know, you want to be in a small town. And if they're a city kid, then we'll just mark them off the list and move on. You know, don't waste time. Find kids that fit our niche. And so for the for our coaches to be able to get out the, those flights help for nobody else to be able to come in the just the the distance and the, the isolation is that that really helps us you know just keep guys focused on the right thing this is a program that has been to the elite eight under each of the last two coaches that have been here you're a coach that's been to not only the final four but won a national championship what what do you foresee as the ceiling for the k-state job is this a place where you can win a national championship most definitely love that love that response i'm sure k-state fans will will love hearing that as well um is that a part of the calculus when you're thinking about what job you're going to take? Because you're somebody that, that obviously waited your turn uh, for a long time. Was that a part of like, hey, I want to make sure I'm taking a job where I can get to that level when I do make that jump? Yes. You know, the the relationships that we all have here on the staff in recruiting, when, when people are going to – people send players to people, not to buildings, okay? And uh, I couldn't ask people who I consider friends – you know, to send someone to me and, and then ask that kid to compromise, you know, what, what you know, in, so at here, we you don't have to compromise. We're in the best league in America. We play in front of the best fans. We're going to sell out every night. We, you know I mean? It's, it's, it is not a compromise to come to Kansas state. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's, that, that's, what's gonna, that's what gives us an opportunity. We have all the resources that we need. Everything that we need to win a national championship, we have. We just have to get the players here. And now winning six games and over the course of three weekends, I mean, there, there's a lot of luck involved in that. Uh, but we're going to get to the point where every year people are going to say, man, K-State's going to have a chance. Yeah, Coach, part of that calculus too will be kind of building out your schedule at some point, uh, uh, the non-conference part. Do you have a particular philosophy that you want to lean towards in that realm while at Kansas state? Um, you know, there's different models, you know, we, we want to play a tough non-conference schedule that gives us a chance because to win a championship, it, it helps if you're a one, two or three seed in the tournament. And to be a one, two, or three seed, you've got to play a good non-conference schedule and then be really successful in your conference, right? And so we'll, it's going to be incumbent on us to, to get that good non-conference schedule in place so that it gives us a chance to, to be a one, two, or three seed down the road. You know, speaking of the, the NCAA tournament that we talked about just a second ago, uh, Kansas just won the national championship and obviously – Huge program, blue blood right down the road. Um, you know, I don't know how much crossover there's been in the past recruiting wise necessarily between the two, but how much more difficult does it make your job, this job, when you have that that behemoth, not only just in the league, but that is an in-state rival and, and pretty close to where you're at? No, that, that that's not a an obstacle. That's a benefit. You know, the rising tide raises all ships. Just think of SEC football, right? Is it bad that Alabama was so good? No. Georgia went out and hired somebody and everybody else went out. And, and so you go and recruiting and you tell a kid, Hey, you want to compete against the national champion? You know, the, the actually the last two national champions. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and what it, was it not for COVID? Maybe it'd been the last three national champions, you know I mean? So kids want to compete against the best. So having a team that wins a national championship in your league is not a deterrent at all. It's actually a benefit. Well, a couple real quick ones here, Coach, and again, greatly appreciate your time here. Uh, this is a bit of a self-serving question for me because I was in college in 2010 when K-State had the Jacob Pullen team that goes to the Elite Eight. And one of my favorite memories of that season, honestly, was the game in Waco where it's Jacob Pullen and Tweedy Carter predominantly going back and forth. But Lace Darius Dunn's playing in that game. I loved the team that you guys had then that also went to a regional final. Uh, how much do you remember from, from that game in Waco that year? I remember it was Pullen and Clemente, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, that backcourt. Holy cow. Hard to guard. 
hard to guard. Man, they, that was those were some fun battles. And I, I really, our staff and their staff were pretty close. You know, just a great respect for each other. And so, you know, we talked to each other quite a bit. Coach Figs was on that staff. And, um, I mean, just, just a great group of guys, great battles. Yeah, fond memories of that group. And then Tweedy, Coach Drew just hired Tweedy at Baylor. And so, and Tweedy just raided my closet in Waco. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's that's pretty smart. Pretty smart use there. Uh, what what Big Twelve coach are you closest with? That's not Scott Drew. Mm, man, we've had some changeover. Uh, I, I have great respect for all these guys. They've all treated me, you know, very well. Um, you know. You know, obviously, I know Mike pretty well, and uh, just a great respect for him. And um, you know, Chris Beard has been, you know, just tremendous, and you know, reaching out. And uh, Coach Self left left me a great message. It was hilarious. And uh, as you know, like I mean, yeah, I know I'm not supposed to like Bill Self, okay? I, fans, y'all, but he's it's hard not to like him, you know unless you're competing against him that night, but he's, he's a, he's a pretty, pretty great guy. And so I, 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 I get along with pretty much everybody in the league. Yeah. Well, I'll leave you with this. Uh, your, your favorite spot so far in, in Manhattan, how much time have you had to explore there? Do you have a favorite spot at this point? Uh, well, I've been to um, Bourbon and Baker. Is that right? Yeah. I've been yeah. there twice yeah. and I've had the chicken and waffles and chicken and biscuits. So, and uh, I don't think I have a favorite yet in that one. And then went to, um, what is it called? The Little... The Little Grill. Uh, little Grill? Little Grill. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was pretty good because, you know, I'm West Indian, so I like Caribbean food. And so, um, but that, that, was, that was really good. So um, all the places, but everyone has been wonderful everywhere we've been. So it's been great. Coach, quick one for me, a fun one here. Um, you know, one of your first videos, in fact, I think it was your first video, it was a message to the K-State students the day you got hired. And I couldn't help but notice you were wearing your Baylor National Championship ring. Are you going to slip that on before you go into a, a recruit's home, before you visit with his family, maybe just as a reminder? Oh, man, I've, I've, I'm debating it, you know, because it's got the big BU on it and uh... – you know, uh, I don't know. I, I actually have it right here in the drawer, but <laughs> so I'm, I'm debating whether I do that or not. Maybe I'll like just have it on my desk if when they come to campus and like show them, let them hold it. You know, our first group meeting with the whole team when actually our first practice, I brought it down to the practice and let the guys hold it and just told them why not us, why not now. And so that's awesome. Uh, I, I lied to you. I have one more quick follow up to the recruiting stuff. I mean, I know you talked about more guys entering the portal these next couple of weeks. Uh, do you anticipate having maybe a major weekend of visitors this weekend or next weekend? I know you can't name names, but yeah, just these, o- over the next two weeks, both weekends and during the week, if we can, we'll have guys on campus. Awesome. See, I like that. Cole, Cole lured you in with a softball question and then came with the hard-hitting one right there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Coach Tang, thank you so much for taking the time for us and, and bearing with us here today. Super excited to have you on board here at K-State. and Can't wait to see uh, where you're able to take this program. Well, looking forward to it, guys. Thank you very much for having me. And I think go Cats. I got to remember to do that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. go Cats.